In the last video, we showed you how the American base XFL 12 got completely swept by the Scar Audio EVL 12, losing in all three different competitions. This time, we also showed you guys the complete lineup of new subwoofers we got to compete, and we allow you guys to choose the new competitors. So if you would like to know who's next to compete, stick around. We got that and more coming right up. After the last video, I suggested that you guys pick a new category of subwoofers to compete. I also promised to choose a, a, a winning subscriber to do it, and I would like to announce DJ Keys as the winning subscriber. Your suggestion of the $150 category have been chosen to theme the next three competitions. By the way, for all you new guys, if you like DIY build, comparisons and competitions, consider clicking the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Over here at the leaderboard, SCAR EVL 12 will remain the leader of the $200 category because it did beat the XFL in the bench test, in the box test, and also in the trunk test. So the EVL 12 will remain number one in the $200 category. However, before we get started, I would like to once again recognize the winning subscriber, DJ Keys. This is your suggestion. You wanted the $150 category subwoofers. Thank you, man. Once again, we couldn't have done it without you. First up is the Scar Audio SVR 12. I did pick this subwoofer up for $130. It does have a max power rating of 1600 watts, an RMS power rating of 800 watts. It has a 2.6 inch dual two ohm voice coil. The Audio Pipe TXX BDC4, I did pick up for 160 bucks. It has a max power rating of 2200 watts, an RMS rating of 1100 watts, it has a three inch dual four ohm voice coil. First up with the unboxing is gonna be the Audio Pipe BDC4. The BDC4 is a very handsome, or I should say beautiful, or maybe I should even say sexy subwoofer, but that and more coming up next. First, we're gonna acknowledge for all the new guys out there who have never seen the subwoofer before and never seen the subwoofer unbox. For all the more experienced guys, please have a little bit of patience because this is gonna be a complete unboxing and review of this subwoofer. First up, what you guys see that it is dual boxed. That is always great to see when you're uh, doing an unboxing because of the fact that sometimes companies don't do too well at boxing their things up but audio pipe did their due diligence here and looked out on the customer once again what you guys are getting right there is a wiring and cutout diagram right there that comes with the box i mean with the speaker very very handy if you guys are planning on building your custom enclosures and wiring this thing up yourself comes very very in handy how, knowing how to wire it up or down as far as an ohm readings plenty of protection for the surround of the subwoofer this is a high roll surround you got your owner's manual right there with all your specs and things of that nature it does come with an allen wrench for hardware on the inside i didn't take it out because i already have plenty of those things Another great thing is that they did keep it in plastic to, pro to protect it from the elements. Humidity will destroy a subwoofer. Some of the parts will rust, depending on the coating of it. And they did have a cutout in the bottom of the box to protect the magnet as well. Good job by Audio Pipe for doing that. Not all manufacturers do that as well as they did here. 
I'm just gonna simply remove the plastic here. And yes, she yeah, is heavy. <laughs> this thing have a quad stack magnet on it. 220 ounces to be sp uh, more specific, specific. And there it is. I tried to see if it passed the one hand test and yes it did. You're gonna need two hands to pick this thing up. It's quite heavy actually. There it is on the bench, guys. Very beautiful subwoofer, in my opinion. Moving on. It, once again, it does have, this is the dual four-ohm configuration, meaning that you can wire this thing up in series to eight ohms, or you can wire it down to two ohms with a parallel configuration. Looking at the side view of it, you can see that this is quite a tall subwoofer due to the four slugs on the bottom of it. Very, very massive looking. Plenty of venting and protection there for the voice coil as you guys can see. This is a black aluminum three inch voice coil. There's your audio branding right there, right over that very, very beefy surround it has. It has a badge stamp right there in the middle with double red stitch piping on it. And there you go, AP4 stack, indicating that this does has four magnets stacked on his, on his motor. Pretty, 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 pretty subwoofer, let me tell you. I know some people say, hey, you don't supposed to use the word pretty when describing a subwoofer, but there you go. On one side, just notice that you only got two leads on this side. That is pretty standard. That's where your Allen keys will fit in right there. Allen wrench will fit in. The, um, you do have the mesh style tinsel leaves. They are woven into the black spider. And on the other side, you have four different leaves right here. They split or double the, uh, the lead output so that you can easily wire this thing in, in series or parallel configuration. And you also do have the, the option of running only one voice call. Just keep in mind that it can only handle half of the powers rated at if you do that. Very, very high row surround. Very, very beautiful subwoofer. I mean, it's it's irresistible to even, to try not to touch this thing. It's irresistible. And as you guys see, I'm giving it the press test. That is... That center cone, that center cap right there is stiff as a brick. It's almost as though they they use some type of, like it's almost like fiberglass. If you guys have ever done any fiberglass, that's kind of what it feels like. It's very, very rigid. It has some type of resin there. And underneath you can see that the, that the surround actually have this bright red color to it. Kind of puts you in the mind of the Siren Vega subwoofers. Very, very beautiful subwoofer. There's another look at the um, at the magnet on it. Red piping, red stitching. Some would say, and red lettering. It's kind of subtle, but this is this is this kind of like gives a good accent on the black. Red and black kind of stands out. Very beautiful. So I know I keep saying very beautiful subwoofer, but it, but it is. I like it. I like the subwoofer. Once again, it has a that motor actually weighs 220 ounces. This thing has a FS of 33 hertz. Very 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 ported friendly. X Max 17 millimeters, and this is a cast aluminum basket. And there's a better shot at that dual configuration that they that they gave you that's to me that's kind of that's kind of a plus right there to cut down on sometimes it's hard to get certain gauges of wire to mesh into one hole and they gave you two of them i think that's very thoughtful of the company and just think about that red under that 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 red color underneath the inverted um the inverted surround it'll be a a pretty good look for people who like to invert their subwoofers and show off the magnets and stuff. Show off that motor. And I think that's kind of like what AudioPipe was going for here. I mean, it's a four stack, 220 ounce motor. Why not show it off, right? And there you go. Plenty of venting there. 
not as much as the scars I may I must admit but plenty nonetheless I believe the center hole there is much bigger than the scars not too shabby I don't I don't pipe and I'm kind of excited about putting it in there because in the trunk because think about it I got an audio pipe amplifier so that'll complete the system right audio pipe sub audio pipe amplifier I don't know this may be a keeper this just may be the keeper that I've been looking for but once again to give it an overview this is the audio pipe TXX BDC 4 dual 4 ohms peak power rating of 2200 watts IMS power rating of 1100 watts 3 inch black aluminum voice coil 220 ounce magnet 33 hertz for FS X max of 17 millimeters with a cast aluminum basket up next is going to be the unboxing of the scar SVR S, uh, SVR 12 the SVR 12 is a new entry by scar audio fairly new that is it's only I don't think it's been out a year six even if six months is that it's it's a it's a very new uh, entry uh, into their mid tier. It's like the mid of the mid tier, actually. Right here, I'm showing you guys the uh, the box that it come in. Very standard for Scar. All Scar boxes almost look alike to me. Just being honest with you. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And that's that the cushion that it comes in protect to me this is premium protection right here I would rather see the foam than see the cardboard just that's just my opinion I think the foam offer more uh, protection because of its um, resilience and the softness of it so you get the best of both worlds. you drop it you also get the sticker the scar audio sticker and once again I like to always you know remind people that depending on where you are you know, not particularly your neighborhood, but you, you go to other neighborhoods. Some people break in your car and they see those stickers. You also get the unit, the user manual. Of course, we got the SVR 12, the dual two ohm configuration of that. And this is your spec sheet for anybody that wants to build their own enclosure and tune their own enclosures. You really, really would need that. That, that piece of paper is very important. So don't do like I've done in the past and lose it. <laughs> And as far as boxing, Scar did not dual box this because I think the foam is good enough for a subwoofer of this weight. I think that that the foam is, is enough protection. I guess the engineers that Scar thought the same. They also felt the need to put the plastic on there to protect it from elements. Very, very important. And there we go. The SVR. All right, so the SVR12 comes in with a dual 2 ohm configuration. It has a peak power rating of 1600 watts, an RMS power rating of 800 watts. It has a 2.6 inch copper voice coil, whereas the the DB the, uh, the audio pipe had a, a black aluminum voice coil. This one here only has a 153 ounce motor. And it has a medium roll surround. It's not a very high surround. Not, I guess you're not going to see that on many 800 watt uh, subwoofer. But you do have that signature red um, spider from Scar Audio. Tensile leaves again, much smaller than that of the the audio pipes BDC4. Nice push terminals though. Leave a comment in the section below whether you guys would prefer push terminals or the Allen the allen screws that audio pipe had who do you think you know have the best application in regards to that the tensile leaves are sewn into the spider here and this one here is this one here does also have a dual stitching um surround didn't go with any other colors scar seldom does they, they, they kind of have that black on black thing going for themselves pretty decent looking subwoofer kind of reminiscent of the SDR to be honest with you and that'll do it for the unboxing of the SCAR SVR12 pretty decent looking subwoofer 
not as beefy a magnet as it is on the audio pipe bdc4 but we've learned in the past big magnets don't equal power all the time and plus this is only rated at 800 watts but we do know that scar underrate their stuff okay we do know that so just because it's rated at 800 watts rms does that mean that it's gonna not sound as good as an 1100 watt rms speaker i don't know moving on we're gonna move on to the bench test and first up is gonna be the audio pipe bdc4 there's one more look at the badging in the center cap red stitching just a beautiful subwoofer all around but keep in mind pretty subwoofer doesn't always equal performance <laughs> i gotta keep it fair and say that there's another aerial view of that four stack magnet very deep subwoofer a lot of prefab boxes wouldn't do this any justice i know some people they just ooh, they talk so bad about prefab but not all prefab are horrible okay not in my opinion once again we got the pioneer deh 150 on deck we're going to be sending this uh we're going to be sending power using this android application right here we're going to sweep it from 150 hertz down to 20 hertz <laughs> Once again, keep in mind, guys, that these subwoofers are fresh out the box, very, very stiff. They have not been broken in at all. This is the first time that these subwoofers have seen power. So keep that in mind when you guys are judging them. I'm going to give this one more run of this. very very stiff surround I'm sorry stiff suspension I should say let's play around with it a little bit see what it does not too shabby for a brand new sub Any bumps and bruises and, and drips you hear in the background and stuff probably falling off the shelf or on my wall. I, I broke a couple pictures during these sub demos, especially the box test. In my opinion, it was responsive enough. It passed my test. I don't know, but I'm not the ultimate judge. You guys are the ones who decide who wins and who loses these competitions, not me. So, you guys be the judge of this. Next up is going to be the Scar Audio SVR12 on the bench. And there it is, dual stitching. It just looks so much to me like the SDR. I believe this was Scar's attempt at a, comp a competitive version of the SDR. Throw a few competition parts at it, 
and see what people how people react to it. And thus far, people have re- reacted quite positive to uh, to the uh, SVR and the SDR, if not more for the SDR. Once again, we got the Pioneer DEH 150. I had this thing sitting in the garage forever. I'm glad you guys thought of something for me to do with it. And the sending these things power, I have a subwoofer amplifier by Dayton Audio. This is the SA-1000 by Dayton Audio. Once again, we're going to be doing the SVR exactly the same. Bass sweep from 150 hertz down to 20 hertz. Right about now. Like I said, guys, brand new subwoofers, fresh out of the box. The only this is the first power that they've ever seen. So keep that in mind. I'm, I'm not gonna put so much power on them where they blow up. I just want to let y'all see what the cone looks like, a little bit of how responsive they are, and both subwoofers are tested at the exact same. trying to give you guys some insight on making your purchases decisions you know helping you out with your purchasing decisions let you guys see these things move before you actually go out and spend your money that's kind of what this is all about and that'll do it for the sky svr